dear viewers, welcome back to the studio. I'm Katharina Delio, and uh, most people call me Kat. And today in the studio, we're going to be working on a project. And I know that most of you, I, well, not most of you, but many of you have said, Kat, what am I going to do with these dendritic prints and these mono prints that I'm making? And how am I going to use them? And so I have a, a quick and easy and fun concertina book that I did in uh, the 2011 issue of So Somerset that I'm going to show you. And they are my, con my concertina quote books. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. Yeah. Often what happens when I send something to Somerset and to go into any of the Somerset publications, they'll choose one or two pieces to really show you the, the full piece. And that's what happened with my miniature quote books, my little concertina quote books. They actually showed uh, two on the inside and then one they showed just simply the cover. And this is the one I'm going to show you today because it's really simple and easy and it's really fun to make. Inspiration for this mini quote book was from a Navajo song and it's called Trail of Song. Walk on a rainbow trail, walk on a trail of song, and all about you will be beauty. There is a way out of every dark mist over a rainbow trail. And to me, this spoke about being down, being depressed, and how art, there's a way out of every dark mist. There's a way to create and to make life beautiful again. Now, when I made this concertina book, I actually used butterflies that were printed on my computer with tissue paper. Now I know a lot of people can't do that, don't have that capability, so today I'm just going to use scrap butterflies and these are just old scraps. You could use butterflies, any kind of image of butterfly that you want. The first thing that you need to decide is what you're going to cover your substrate with. Now I used music paper just like I did in the magazine issue, but as I said before, you could just as easily use dendritic print from one of our videos or mono prints would be absolutely beautiful too to cover that substrate and it would it would be fabulous. So you can make several different books if you like. So I painted music paper and I used two different sizes of music paper, large and the inside of the book I used the small paper from this old book I had. So I simply painted it black and then I glued it down onto the music paper. And then I simply used a, a sanding sponge to get a nice clean edge. And I'll tell you what, a sanding sponge is one of my favorite tools in the studio. It works so well. It gives you a nice clean edge no matter what you're working with. So that's how you do it. So now we have the cover. And I'm going to show you how to stitch on the next step. So I used my sanding wedge to get a nice fine edge all around and then as you saw in the uh, in the magazine <clears throat> I had stitched lines and the lines represent the flight of the butterflies and it also represents the rainbow and I'll show you that on the inside later but I chose the colors red white and black to kind of go with my butterfly theme and I used in order to know where I was stitching, I used a pencil, a white colored pencil, to stitch over the black so I could see it. Now if you make a mistake, you can just simply take your eraser and erase it and then redraw it. Now if you use a lighter color, of course, then you won't need to use a colored pencil. You can just use a pencil to do it. So I would finish stitching these all the way through and this line goes all the way over here, the red goes this way, so that your whole, the back of your, and the cover 
of your concertina is covered in stitches and looks like this. So this would be the front cover of your concertina. Now I used black velvet fabric and that's what I used to create this lovely background for the little butterfly and I used a piece of lace. Now in the original I used a piece of Battenberg lace here which I don't have so I'm substituting a different kind of lace and I simply cut out the top so that it had the same kind of look. And then I'm just simply stitching along the edge. Now what's holding this butterfly in place is a thin piece of tea bag. And I simply cut this open, released all the tea, and then used the bag. This is a Mighty Leaf tea bag and it's a silk tea bag. If you have a tea bag that's really thin that you can see through, then you could use that as well, but I particularly like the silk from the Mighty from the Mighty Leaf tea. And I just put the scrap on top of the lace and I, I secured it with a glue stick. Just a dab in the center for each one so that it would hold in place. And then I'm just going to finish stitching this up and adhere it to the front cover. I finished stitching in the butterfly and I just did a simple stitch all the way around the edge in white just to show off the stitches. And I'm going to just apply it to my cover using some gel mat. I'm just going to use a little bit because you don't want to use too much. You want to make sure you're using a very dry brush because if you're not, then you're going to saturate your fabric and that will not be pretty. So you just want enough to hold it down. And, and I put it up higher than I normally would on a concertina book because we're going to tie it with ribbon at the end. And now we're going to work on the inside. I used antique hymnal book pages to cover the inside. I wanted the music paper to be kind of the theme through this, throughout this. So the larger music paper on the cover and on the inside smaller music paper because to me butterflies represent joy and whenever I feel joyful I feel like singing. So that's what came to me and how I interpreted that trail of song. And so again you're going to use the sponge sand it back and it just comes off easily and it covers all the stitches from the front of your book. I used an awl to punch the holes through the mixed media paper. It just makes it so much easier to, to do that, to stitch through rather than using your, your needle and thread. And if you've seen uh, my other projects, uh, I, I use the same technique. And to do that, I simply put it on the cloth, on a white cloth, and then follow the line and just punch through. Now, of course, I would have continued with the stitches. And when you cover it up on the inside, you're going to notice, if you use an awl, that the, there are raised stitches on the inside. Now, we're going to cover that up. We covered it up with the paper, but you're still going to be able to see it. So you can use a brayer and a flat surface to get rid of that raised surface if you like. But basically we're going to end up covering that up. I'm going to finish with my sanding sponge. And you want to wait really until it's wet, I mean, until it's dry because it's, it's a little wet right now, so it's having a bit of an, of an issue with it. But once it's dry, it'll be really easy to use. Now on the inside of the book, the illustration for the butterfly and the rainbow, I used black velvet again, and I interpreted the rainbow as just a simple stitch. And if you know, if you've been watching my videos, you know I love making marks on paper with stitches. I love making marks on paper with pens and pencils and uh, painting beautiful pages for backgrounds. So the stitch is simply a rainbow and I cut it so that it would cover up most of the page and still allow the, the music to show through. And then I'm going to use a butterfly 
and little tiny piece, I hope you can see this piece of, of the tea bag, the, the tea silk is actually what it is, and it's going to cover the butterfly and get stitched on there, and then your butterfly will be inside, and it's free to float and fly. I stitched the tea silk down to the velvet fabric using black thread and I've stitched it on three sides and now I'm just going to insert my butterfly and I'm going to finish stitching this up now I just used a simple running stitch you can get really fancy with your stitches if you want to I, I generally choose to just use simple stitches because I want the artwork to speak and I want the stitches to just be marks. There we go. Now your butterfly is inside the silk. You can just float around back and forth. I just love that, the way it moves. I'm going to cut this off. and I'm going to glue it down. I'm using gel medium, just the mat. You can use any kind of adhesive that you want, but remember it needs to be a dry brush and not wet. There's your concertina. And I would take a piece of ribbon, wrap it around, and cut it. So you can come up with any quote that you find lovely, fascinating, interesting, uplifting, you name it, and create your own little concertina book to go with it. We're close to chow for now, but I wanted to thank you all for your subscriptions, for your likes, and your wonderful comments. I love getting back to you on your comments. And next week, we're going to be talking about The Naturalist Notebook, my new collection. I can't wait to share it with you and to talk about some of the techniques. I used resist and lots of different techniques in this and some of the new things I'll be sharing with you on future videos. So until then, Ciao for now. Mm -hmm.